Hi guys. <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss fragrance. This is a new fragrance haul. I feel like it's been a while since I've done like a big haul like this. Um, I was on like a pretty much a no buy for the like the end of the year through the end of the year just because I was broke. I'm still a little broke like I'm still working on paying off some um, debt, but we're, we're getting real good. We're getting real close to my goal of being like debt free. So that's nice. Um, with that being said, during that, like no buy, I did pretty decently. I bought, I ended up buying, um, like only two fragrances. Um, and they were smaller. One was like a little roller ball. I missed my best friend Mimi, her like signature set which is like in Sky 1111. And the other one was a repurchase of something I'd already bought and I had run out of and I was like, girl, I know I want this. I like the scent. So that was Mariah Carey's M. But in addition to those, those were purchased a while back. So those aren't really new news. We have a lot of new news, guys. I think I counted, let's just do a recount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that eight? One, two, three four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight. I want to say eight full bottles of perfume. <clears throat> so like either like a two ounce or like a 3.4 ounce. <laughs> and we also have two fragrance mists, matching lotions for them. We have uh, two samples that I got and didn't like, and then a matching lotion and a, another matching body wash for like mini size of uh, one of the perfumes. So I've added a lot, but with that adding and trying, there's actually been a lot of fails, guys. And I don't want to say like a complete overt fails, but just kind of being like unenthused, if that makes sense. And I think that's for a couple of different reasons. I don't think that necessarily like the, all of the perfumes are bad. Um, the truth is there's two that I do not like at all. <laughs> like when I look at this, there's two that I do not like at all. And then the other ones that I dislike are just cause they're not like special or they don't fit my personality. And I think that also as I grow my collection, like a, I move my taste a little bit better. Um, and also I just think, yeah, I, I might already have something in my collection, um, that like scratches a certain itch. And then, so when I add something it's just like, you know, is this something special? Well, we're going to talk about that today because there's also some real successes in this um, sort of haul that I've done and a lot of stuff I'm really happy about. Um, so again, let's talk about it. So let's we'll start off with this one. This is the one I got today. Uh, this was never anything on my radar actually for all, the longest time. And then I just got the nudge to try it because it's so dang cheap that I was just like, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. This is Pink Sugar by uh, Aqualina. I'm sure you've heard a lot about it. It is just okay, guys. It So it has, I like it the more it wears on skin. It has the whole burnt sugar vibe going on that people talk about for sure. Like, yes, it's cotton candy, but it's really burnt sugar. This is a burnt sugar smell. Like, I don't care what anyone tells you. It is super, super sweet, super, super like saccharine. Um, and it's straight up in the opening burnt sugar. And then as you like wear this, it becomes softer, a lot more subtler and it's nice. But I got this because at the time, at the time when I was wanting this, I didn't have anything super sweet in my collection. Like I did have sweet fragrances, don't get me wrong. I have like a whole shelf of sweet perfumes, but I don't know anything just like sort of like, you know, like on the nose like that, like kind of like a Britney Spears fantasy vibe. <clears throat> and I don't know. I also, the licorice note in this enticed me because I usually like licorice in perfumes, but the licorice in here, I think serves more to serve the whole like burnt sugar vibe. So it's, it doesn't be, it doesn't feel that interesting to me. Um, I think this is pretty like it, like if I smell this walking by someone, I'd be like, Oh, like, like it has a nice, it would have a nice like sort of sillage to it, if that makes sense. And the lasting power is pretty decent on this, um, as well. I just don't like, you'll see I've added like, there's at least one, there's one perfume really, which like makes me like, I have something really sweet that I added to my collection. That's like way more interesting than this. So now I'm just like, mm, yeah, I don't know. Um, 
but I think this is a fine perfume, especially for the price. Like if this is in just if this is in your bracket and you can't afford like other like super sweet smells, I think that this would work fine. I just don't see the need for it in my collection. So I think I haven't checked if I can return this one, but I'm probably gonna be returning this one if I use like literally like a few sprays, like just to test. So um this is one that that just didn't like I didn't hate, but I just don't I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't. Let's talk about one that I absolutely do need in my life. Let's switch it up. This is Alien by Mugler. And I will say, I thought that I was purchasing a vintage bottle. They, they tricked me, girl. Yes, they did. Because this was about a price that was, this price wasn't really reasonable, in my opinion, for like a 1.7 ounce. It was like 85 bucks for a 1.7 ounce, but it's the new formula. To me, I'd pay 1.7 ounce 85 for like the old formula. So they did get me, gal. They did get me a bit. Um, um, you need to stop. That's my cat trying to get in. He's gonna have to chill. Or I'm gonna have to let him in. We'll see. But, um, this is so good. I had had Alien Eau Extraordinaire finish the bottle. And that is like Alien... Okay, I have to let my cat in, guys. One sec, because he's psychotic. Are you serious? Guys, are you seeing this? Come in. You're gonna come in. Ugh, that's the thing I hate. He'll like want to come in and claw at the door and then he doesn't actually come in anyways alien this is um by dominique ropion and i bring this up because i have another dominique ropion fragrance that i purchased that i don't really like that much um so that's why i bring up the perfumer this is like a <clears throat> punchy sexy synthetic jasmine it truly smells like alien like the name alien is so fitting for it because it's it's a like almost so like single singular note perfume there is i do detect like some amber and some woods in the deep deep dry down of this that i really really like but like the star by and far is the jasmine in it but this is like this synthetic otherworldly punchy jasmine and i really like this stuff it's very heady and I really, really love it. It has such character and personality. I will say this new formula, I haven't tried the older formula yet, but yeah, really it does not last. So I don't have it something like a benchmark to compare it to, but just in general, it doesn't last. For about an hour, super punchy and really like nice in your face. After that hour, it starts to fade and it just comes really closer to the skin and it starts to dry down. The dry down's pretty, don't get me wrong. It's like, like I said, it's like an amber sort of woody dry down, a little bit soapy too. And I think it's really pretty. And in fact, um, my, I, my coworker, I was wearing this the other day mixed with one of the other, um, one of the body sprays in here, the coconut body spray, I'll show you guys later. And somehow she still detected this and she was like, it's really pretty. At that point, it was just the dry down, like I smelled it but it was still detectable to her and she found it pretty. And that was after a few hours, probably like six hours at work. So yeah, I will say I would love to get a vintage bottle of this um, and not miss the boat just because I would love to try the vintage. But because I like this scent like so much, like it just feels so suited to my personality and so unique, I would still even repurchase the new formulation. Um, I would definitely try to purchase the vintage before I buy a new bottle, like, you know, or a refill for this, but I do think this is just a very pretty perfume that suits my taste. Lasting power is not there, I will say, and I'm, I will fully acknowledge that, but this is one that I just respray spray all over because it is just such a unique scent, guys. It really, really is. This is Alien by Mugler. This is like a once in a lifetime sort of creation, you know, like those special perfumes. Mugler has a lot of those to me, like Angel, Aura, like all of Mugler's perfumes are kind of like that. But it's like that, like once in a lifetime thing, like Dior Addict or Dior Hypnotic Poison. What's another good one? Um, those are the ones coming off the top of my head, but you know what I mean? Like those really, really special perfumes. Um, so I love this stuff. Alien by Mugler. Okay, let's go with another one that I didn't like. We'll kind of alternate. This stuff fucking sucks ass. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm kidding. Um, ew, gross. I was so disappointed, guys. 
I do not have good luck with this house. This is now two for two that I do not like. And I'm just kind of taking that as like, I probably shouldn't buy from this house anymore, which is sad because there's another perfume by them that I really wanted to try called Poupe, which I think means doll in French. And it's supposed to be like a, <clears throat> a sort of like a, like a mm, fruity, coconutty, like almost like plastic Barbie doll head scent. Um, that sounds weird, but that sounded really appealing to me, but I haven't had good luck with this um, house so far. This is Tocad by Rose Shaw. First of all, I adore this bottle. Are you kidding me? This is the cutest, cutest little bottle. Um, I've also tried Femme by Rose Shaw and I, I wore that and I first kind of really liked it because it was like a spicy, fruity Shebra. Um, <clears throat> and then the cumin note in it started to really bug me. Like it was just too sharp and just too like stinky almost. And I like like complex scents. Like I, I do. I like interesting notes and things like that. But that just didn't wear well on me. And this just smells like something ain't right in here. Something is not right in here. And I don't know what exactly, um, it almost smells like plasticky in a sense, but not in a fun, like Mugler way, you know, like Mugler Aura almost, we'll talk about that later, almost has like a plasticky note to it, but in a fun way, this, I don't, I don't know. Um, so I will say it's interesting, but I will be sending this back more than likely. I think also part of the disappointment for this one is the hype around it. Like everyone hypes this one up. Everyone hypes this up. I think maybe what I don't like in it is the geranium. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't looked at the full set of notes because everything else in here I should like, like the orchid, the iris, the heliotrope, whatever else is going on in there in that floral heart. Like in theory, I should really like this, but I don't know why I don't like this. And I wish I liked this. Um, I will say it's interesting to sniff, like just a sniff, but like, I would not wear this perfume. I don't feel like it suits me. At least not now. At least not now. Maybe I'll come, maybe I'll like buy another bottle in a few years and be like, oh my God, this is stunning. But it's a no for me right now. Tocad by Rochat. I think again, it was marketed to me as like a really sort of interesting vintage profile vanilla. And it does have a vintage quality to it. I will say that but I do not get vanilla at all. Maybe sort of like an ambery quality, but it is, it's, it's just not what I had in mind guys. And it's so disappointing because I've wanted to try this one for a long time. Did not live up to the hype. Um, and guys, this is kind of unusual for me. You know, usually I like most of the stuff, but I think again, as I'm like sort of experiencing more now, I know like what I like versus what I don't. Oh, let's talk a vintage one that I loved. Um, this is Youth Do by Estee Lauder. And when I say vintage, baby, this is vintage. So much, in fact, that this smells so nostalgic to me. And so when I smelled this, I was like, this literally smells like my Nana. Not in not in a like, this smells like Grandma White. This literally smelled like smells like my, my great grandmother. So I had to ask and check in with my grandma and be like, did Nana wear Youth Do? And she said... No, she said my Nana actually wore Shalimar mostly. Um, so now I have to buy a bottle of Shalimar and I've been wanting to buy a bottle of Shalimar and that was just kind of the the last straw. I think I want to get a bottle of the vintage Eau de Cologne. But this is like a super vintage, guys, super vintage. So if you don't like vintage profiles, you will not like this. If you don't mind smelling older, mature, classy, refined, and a little vintage, um, and super powdery, super cinnamon. This is not going to be for you because this is like a cinnamon, but not like in a red hot sort of way. Cinnamon, like not like a candy red hot way, which is what I was expecting. It's like cinnamon and super balsamic, cinnamon, resiny, cinnamon, resins, and powder. So it's like cinnamon, resins, and like cosmetic powder. There's a Coca-Cola in, uh, note in this. There's like a tofu balsam resin note in this, which I really detect. Like it almost has like a piney sort of like 
quality too, like pine, cinnamon, um, but lots of cosmetic powder and lots of resin. And I really, I really do like this. Like it's so fun to sniff and I've already worn this out. This is a beast. This is a beast. You may not smell it on you. Other people are going to smell this on you. I truly put like two sprays of this on and my dad was like, Jesus, you smell strong. And I think that's just because I think, yeah, it's probably strong, but also because it's a vintage scent, like people have an association with it that it's like, oh, that's strong perfume from back in the day, you know, but this is, uh, this is like 30 bucks and so pretty. Like I, I, this goes on my vintage shelf and like my vintage perfumes, I, some of them I wear a lot, like Obsession and Ciara, I wear a lot. Halston, I still wear, um, my Agent Provocateur, I still wear, my Lulu, I still wear. I just don't get, wear those as much but I love having them for when I'm in the mood. I love having them because I get them my vintage moods, guys. And I do like vintage perfume. Just don't like all of them, clearly, because like Tokad, no. This, absolute yes. Such a cute, cute little bottle. And uh, this was also Andy Warhol's signature scent. If you know Delta Work, I believe Delta Work wears this every now and again, because I remember her saying her mother wears this or like has always worn this. So I like this stuff. I really do. But again, if you don't have a vintage sort of like cosmetic powder, cinnamon, um, affinity, it's not gonna, you probably won't like it. But this is Estee Lauder's Youth Do. Happy I own a bottle. Okay. Um, let's talk one, another sort of disappointment, I guess. We'll go like, we're gonna go disappointment, um, like until we reach a point where it's more likes than disappointments. So this was such a disappointment, guys. You know, not such a disappointment in the sense that like it's all bad scent because I think this is really pretty still. I just think this is another one that like the YouTube hype train and the fragrance community hype train has done a disservice um, by hyping it up so much because you get it and then it's just like, this is not very interesting. What's What was the hype? So first off, here is the bottle. Um, I think it's a fine bottle. I don't really like the font. It's kind of a weird gripe, but I don't really like the font on here. I feel like it looks cheap. Um, I like the bottle itself and I like this little, and I love the cap because this cap has a sort of like, I don't know, sort of Medusa, but like cute little face motif going on at the top. It's really cool. Let's, um, yeah, let's sniff. It is interesting in some senses. Um, it's a vanilla, and really what's interesting about it is the bay leaf note um, that everyone talks about, which is super interesting. I will definitely concur. The bay leaf part is interesting. Um, it, it kind of renders it, the way I experience the bay leaf in this is not in like a super strong, earthy way. I kind of get a spa vibe to it. So that I really like. I get this sort of spa-like bay leaf note. The opening, when you first spray it, is going to be a little alcoholic, at least in my experience. Uh, again, this is one I've only tested out because I do think I'll probably be returning this. Um, again, guys, normally I don't return fragrances, but the shops that I bought from this time on eBay do accept returns. And I'm like, well, if I'm not going to wear it, I might as well return it. Um, there's no point, you know? Or if I'm going to just like declutter it in a few months after I realized, yeah, I, I don't really like it, then I'd rather just declutter it. But um, the bay leaf is not what I have issue with in this. The bay leaf, I think, is kind of pretty. It kind of lends a sort of, not overly green, but like a sort of aromatic spa-like quality to it. But this, to me, is another one that was sold as like a heavy amber vanilla scent, like amber vanilla with an interesting bay leaf. And I, I guess it's ambery, but the vanilla that the bay leaf is attached to is so like flat, flat, uninteresting. It feels like ungrounded, like unsupported is the way that I would say it. Like it feels like, to me, this feels like, like a fragrance of almost like top and middle notes. Like there's no supporting amber vanilla base to it. And again, this was sold to me as like a vanilla scent, like an interesting vanilla. So this is not an inherently bad scent. I think this is really pretty. And I like, if you like what I described that I get from it, you actually might really enjoy this. I think because to me, this was sold as a super ambery, vanillic, interesting vanilla. 
it was a little bit of a letdown because it kind of just, it's like that bay leaf and something a little bit sweet, but it almost feels like, it would be like the difference between a vanilla extract and an imitation vanilla, if that makes sense. That's kind of what I get out of this. It's not, it's not grounded. It's not supported. Um, and it was a letdown because I really wanted to like this. Don't think it's a bad scent again. Just it is not as it was marketed to me. So again, don't believe the hype. <laughs> you know, we got to test and try it out for yourself, I guess. Um, so that was La Lique's Le Parfum. Oh, one other interesting note. The dry down of this I do like though. That's the one thing I will say about this fragrance that I do like. And this is a, another Dominique Ropion creation. That's why I brought it up earlier because the dry down of Alien, I find actually kind of similar to the dry down of this. This does have a sort of like, when it comes really close to the skin, it can kind of have that sort of woody quality to it. Like it's like a kind of like a generic, a little bit ambery, but like I said, the amber doesn't feel super supported in this, but like a sort of woody aromatic dry down is what I get from this. That feels pretty similar to the dry down in Alien. And I did actually, the reason I was like, am I tripping or not? I had to look it up. I looked up on Fragrantica and someone else said that there's a hint of Alien in this. Not in not in any other way other than the, just like the sort of interesting woody dry down. Um, aromatic woody dry down. But yeah, La Ligue La Parfum, I'm, I probably won't, will not be keeping this. This is one I'll be returning as well. Okay, let's talk about one that I love. This is also, guys, normally I don't keep boxes for fragrances, but because I'll be returning some of them and also just be for the sake of the video, I was like, well, I'll keep them in the boxes if I have them, <laughs> just to show them, and then I'll throw them away. So this is YSL Leave Intense. This is another one that I wanted for such a long time, guys, and this is one that has been hyped up to me that I adore and love. And I should also say, I did like smell this before I bought it. So I smelled this in June of this year when I was visiting um, one of my friends uh, during my cousin's wedding. We went to go to Macy's and just smell a bunch of perfume together. And I tested, on skin, I tested this. I smelled a whole lot of other perfumes, but on skin I tested this and I tested Black Opium La Parfum. That's what I'm also considering getting because since these vanillas flopped, I'm like, well, now I need another good vanilla because I, I'm i trying to build up my vanillas because vanilla is a note that I like. And obviously vanilla is really popular right now. Um, but I have about one, two, three. I have about three interesting vanillas, four now with this one, I would say. Because um, this to me is a little bit of vanilla, vanilla scent. It has some more stuff going on in it than just that. But yeah, now I'm debating um, adding La Ligue Le Parfum maybe to my list. I also kind of want to try the Burberry Goddess. Like I know that one's been super hyped up too, but I, I'm kind of curious about it. So I'm thinking of getting a sample or hoping of finding a sample for like decent price. Um, that's the thing guys, samples aren't always affordable. I do have two samples in here to share with you that were worth it to me to like acquire. I'll discuss that. But that's the thing is not a lot of people have um, perfume shops near them anymore. Like malls are dying. So there's no like Macy's or JCPenney. That's one of the only places that a lot of people can smell their perfumes. What, like second and third house perfume shops, sometimes all niche, they don't really do like designer and that's great, but like not all of us want super niche fragrances or not, maybe not even that we don't want super niche fragrances, but maybe we just don't have the budget for it, you know? Um, sorry, not to get on a tangent about uh, like sampling, but it's true. Anyways, I, I sampled this, I tried it on skin in summer and obviously it was summer then so I didn't purchase it and I also just didn't have the budget then um, but I really did like it. This is and I've also tried the original Lieb because my mom has worn the original Lieb for a while now. Don't like the original Lieb at all on myself and I think it smells good on my mom but it really gives me like it gives me fancy laundry detergent vibes. Um, it, it, the lavender in that is a lot more sharp and it's interesting because the lavender is super detectable in this as well. But with the other notes, it feels really supported in the, like, in Lieb. This is a conversation we need to have. Some perfumes, like, it's like the top notes are really fun and interesting. 
but the bases are not there to back it up and support what else is going on. Like, I think that's where like a lot of vintage scents really exceed is like, yeah, the top might be interesting too, but there's really this beautiful base built into the fragrance that supports everything going on in there. So yeah, in, in the original Lieb, I just don't find that the lavender is feels really supported. And it kind of just gives, it, it has a colder vibe than this. This is a lot warmer. And yeah, I just don't like the original Lieb, but this is, oh, this is so good. Oh my God. It is like, yes, it's heavy on the lavender, heavy on the orange blossom, heavy on the amber, but also yes, heavy on the vanilla. It's all of those things. And I wouldn't say like, I wouldn't just say this is a vanilla fragrance. I would say this is like, all of the things I would say, like lavender, I would say, I would say lavender vanilla or like lavender amber, you know, but the orange blossom is really present in there too. And there's almost like a honeyed quality here to the amber. And when you spray it, it, this stuff is strong. This has amazing lasting power, at least on my chemistry, amazing lasting power, like all day. And as it dries down, so the beginning is a lot, lot, uh, lavender forward it almost has like a fougere quality to it it's hard to describe because fougeres usually and lavenders are like really masculine marketed but this is like fougere for women is the best way I could like describe it like it's the lavender is like like strong but soft at the same time oh I just love this one guys get your nose on this if you can there are a lot of dupes I haven't tried any of them because I liked this so much when I sampled it, I was like, yeah, I don't want to get a dupe and then be disappointed. And also, since it was around Christmas time, normally I would not pay more than $100 for a fragrance. That's kind of just like my eh, my limit. Um, but this was a full bottle. This is a three ounce. I already knew I liked it. And I think the bottle is darling on top of it. I just think this bottle is so cute. Um, so yeah, I treated myself. This is one... Uh, there's a lot of other, clearly I treated myself in general with the perfumes, but this is one of the ones, this was one of my splurges, like, and I'm really, really happy with it. Really happy. I think this will definitely be a set in my collection for a very long time. Um, I don't know about wearing this in hotter months, but for sure right now in the cold, this is like going to be a staple and is already becoming a staple. Why sells leave intense? Okay, let's talk. We were talking, oh, let's switch it up. We've been talking about perfume for a long time. Let's talk about, we'll get back. There's some more perfume samples and then a full bottle, but let's talk about some fun little body mists I picked up. Uh, Bath and Body Express is having a semi-annual sale and um, I don't sort of covet like body sprays and body mists like for their standalone qualities, if that makes sense. Like I'm not like, oh my God, this is like, this is my new fragrance, you know? but I love what they can offer as like a supporting role. Like I love a body mist and a lotion to layer with another fragrance. And sometimes they are complimentary and sometimes they don't even go together at all and it just makes it more interesting. Let me give you a prime example. One of the layering combos that I wore this earlier this week was Alien. A little bit of the Lake and Sky, well, what I did first was a little bit of the Lake and Sky perfume oil, 1111, rolled on, sprayed some Alien, and before that, actually, I had applied some cocoa lotion, coconut lotion, and then I just doused in some coconut body spray. Kind of like a, I guess it's not strange, like it's still florals in like, you know, tropics, I guess, going on, but kind of unusual combo, like this super punchy, punchy jasmine um layered with the sort of musky um 1111 you know zonic 1111 and then just kind of for fun I was just like you know yeah it's the middle of uh winter but we're we're wearing we're wearing Coco Passion and that really did it for me this is really pretty this is really cute for layering I think I will wear this a ton in um like the warmer months as it starts to warm up I love coconut guys so it's pro it's not super shocking that I like this I also layered this with this. We'll talk about this soon, um, but it layered really well with that. Um, but yeah, it's there's nothing special about this, but it's just like a nice coconut. The notes that are listed on like by Bath & Body Works is salted coconut minoy, so like that minoy oil um, that kind of gives things like a suntan-y tropical vibe, which definitely is in here. And then 
sugared neroli and uh, bronzed sandalwood. I don't know that I so much smell the neroli or the sandalwood, but I'm sure they're here because this feels like a well-rounded scent. Um, this feels like just a nice, simple coconut. Again, I like coconut and I got the matching body lotion as well. This is Cocoa Paradise by Bath, Bath and Body Works. Um, I want to get some uh, Victoria's Secret body lotions and mist too for layering. But yeah, these were on sale during the semi-annual sale and I was like, let me snatch those. I wish the Bath and Body Works semi-annual sale though this year, there was a lot of stuff that I, I wish was on sale. And it was like, I don't know, they put out all the flop scents. Like there was just a lot of like generic, like fruity musks or like, I don't know, you know, like that, that fuzzy Bath and Body Works sort of just general, like fuzzy, sweet, you know, blush cardigan, for example. There was a lot of those on sale and not a lot of like the interesting scents that I really wanted to try from Bath and Body Works. Like I would love, would have loved if um, Central Amber was on the, you know, semi-annual sale. I would have loved Strawberry Pound Cake on the um, semi-annual sale. Would have loved, um, they had released two vanilla scents earlier this year. It one was like uh, Fresh Vanilla Blossoms and the other one was Cozy Vanilla Bourbon. All I could find for those two, Cozy Vanilla Bourbon and the Fresh Vanilla Blossoms, I think they put the body washes on sale. But I was like, girls, where are the body mists and, and the lotions? Like, stop being stingy. There wasn't a lot of good stuff for sale. But I was happy with these. Yes. And I did manage to find one vanilla. And this is one that I already knew I loved. So I was like, you know what? I would love to pick this one up as well. One that I didn't pick up that I almost picked up was Twisted Peppermint. But by the time I decided it was interesting to me, I had already placed this order. So I was like, well, I'm not going to buy another, place another order just for Twisted Peppermint. But um, Vanilla Bean Noel, this is a classic. I've loved this ever since I was little, like ever since I was little. And kind of a fun little like half happy, half sad story. Half, half sad because it seems sad, but happy now that like I'm me and I just like love life. And it sounds so little, but... I used to smell this when I was little. When I would go to Bath and Body Works with my mom, I would smell all the scents, right? And um, because I wasn't yet living in my full self that I am now, um, I would always like, there were so many sweet scents and like feminine scents that I really, really liked. But um, I just, I was so repressed and I hadn't stepped into myself yet. And um, this is one of them I remember really, really loving, Vanilla Bean Noel. And she like got it for my sister. And I remember being so moated because I was like, girl, just tell her you like the lotion. My mom's not even judgmental to begin with, but I was like, just tell her you like this smell and she'll probably get it for you. And then I just remember like pretending that I liked another one. It was like white citrus. Cause that was like, that scent is super boring. You guys, if you ever smelled that, it's super boring. And it's pretty unisex in my opinion. I was like, oh, just tell her you like that instead. Um, but no, years later, Baby, we're getting our Vanilla Bean Noel in. This is Vanilla Bean Noel, and it is this pretty sort of like vanilla extract baking, almost vanilla scent. It's super straightforward. Um, the notes in it are fresh vanilla bean, warm caramel, sugar cookies, whipped cream, snow-kissed musk. Really, again, it's just like a pretty, pretty straightforward vanilla extract, baked good, um, fuzzy vanilla, and it layers really well with a lot, a lot of stuff. I like this one. Um, it reminds me a little bit. I'm going to do an empties video soon. Just a general beauty empties. It reminds me of the EOS um, vanilla cashmere body lotion a little bit. Like I find them a little similar. I haven't done a side by side because I already ran out of that. So I can't say for sure. But it definitely smells similar. But yeah. On sale. So I picked these guys up. They layer amazingly. Loves it. Love, love, love. Okay. Um, we have three more to get through. Um, these, so this is the tiniest little, um, like six mil, uh, dabber bottle of Alien Goddess Intense. I've been curious about this one for a minute. Um, and so I just decanted it in here and boy, do I love this stuff. You can see there's only like a little tiny bit left. Not that there was a lot to begin with, but oh my God, this stuff is so pretty. Again, I love coconut. So this has coconut in it. Um, I still detect a little bit of the original alien 
in this little baby in the goddess in terms i haven't i've smelled the alien goddess the original in pa uh, passing and i didn't find it that interesting and when i first smelled this in the store i didn't find it that interesting but i also didn't test it out on skin so i was like thinking about this and i was just like you know what i want to test it on skin because a lot of the reviewers who i have similar taste to had liked this so tried this and liked it and so i was like well this sample was like 14 bucks for six mils, which seems like a lot, but it's more than like the little 1.5, you know, eh, eh, eh. I wanted to be able to test this like multiple times. So, um, it's really interesting. You can smell almost ev all of the notes listed in, um, Alien Goddess Intense, but they're blended just very, very well. Um, my mom was able to name something citrusy, so she was detecting the bergamot, something coconut, so she was detecting the coconut. What was the other stuff she mentioned? Um, I want to say she detected vanilla, which there's vanilla in this, and I think she said something woody. So she was pretty on the nose with this one, um, which again tells you that the notes are pretty, pretty accurate. But let me go ahead and just open her up. I don't want to spray the little decant, the little sample, because um, I'm, I do want to get this, but I'm just not going to buy it yet. Um, oh, this is pretty, this is pretty. And it, it, it is summery guys. Like that's why I want to get this because ultimately I could see this being like my signature scent during the summer because, you know, during summer, like the vibes are generally fruity, generally clean, musky, fresh. Right. And while I like that, there are fruity scents. Actually, we'll discuss, I, I forgot I have two more perfumes, not just one more perfume. We'll discuss this baby because this relates to it. Aura by Mugler. The EDT of that is another scent that I want to repurchase that I've tried. Um, but okay, I'm going on a tangent. Summer is generally fruity. Aura EDT, love that because it's fruity, but it's still interesting. But I haven't found a whole lot of other summertime scents that feel super interesting. Like I could wear my Fenty which I love. I could wear my Lancome Idol Intense and I could wear my Juicy Couture um, EDP. But other than that, like I can wear other things, guys. Like I can wear non-overtly like summer, spring scents in the summer. But I don't know. I just, this really calls to me because it's like, yes, it's coconut and it's floral, but not in like a suntan lotion way. Although I do detect, this smells like lotion. This smells like nice lotion, but not in that sort of like bronze goddess way. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? I also haven't smelled bron bronze goddess, but you know, like that uh, standard suntan lotion perfume or scent. The notes in this is like bergamot, coconut, jasmine tea, as well as jasmine. And I wanna say cashmere wood and vanilla. And again, I detect all of it. It feels super, super warm, but clean. Again, I, it almost reminds me of freshly lotioned skin out, out of the shower with like a really classy lotion. But this feels wearable year round. Like I've worn this already in winter and I love it, but I also think this would be an amazing summer scent. So this is definitely one that is on my list. When I will get it, I don't know. Um, but it, but it's on there. I, I want to say I'll probably purchase this sometime this year um, as we get closer to the warmer months because, yeah, I have a lot of wintertime perfumes or perfumes that generally perform better in the winter or fall. Um, but, you know, because I tend to like sweeter uh, amber vanillas and vintages and gourmands, that doesn't leave a whole lot of variety in the summer. And this just really speaks to me. Um, so this is Alien Goddess Intense. This was definitely a sample that I want to get a full bottle of. So yeah. Okay. Let's talk a sample that I didn't like and we'll come back to the last two perfumes. I know this video is really long. I know I went a little crazy, guys. But obviously I'm not keeping all these. There were some flops. Yes, there were. Um, this is one I'm glad I sampled and did not just go ahead and blind buy. Um, because this does not agree with me <laughs> whatsoever. And it's on paper, this is something that I would love. Um, this is Jean Paul Gaultier Divine. First thing I want to say, Jean Paul Gaultier, the bottle of this is stunning. It's like their traditional sort of like um, corseted bottle, but it's the corseted uh, Madonna um, perfume that she wore for her blonde ambition 
world tour. So I think the bottle is stunning. I love the name divine and I love the marketing campaign for this in the sense that, um, I just saw this on TikTok that they were giving out free samples of this. I think that again is stunning marketing. Like not only is it smart, it makes me respect them as a brand because they're saying, try our product. If you like it, go ahead and buy it. Marketing nowadays from companies is like, you need this, you need that. No, baby, John Paul Gaultier put their money where their mouth is. They said, if you want to try the set, we are going to send it to you free of charge. I paid nothing for this sample, which is how it should be, you know, but most companies don't do that these days. You have to pay for little samples like this, either through the company or through third party websites that are insane. And again, most people do not have perfume stores or places they can smell perfumes um, in person these days. So it's just kind of like, what the fuck? So I really, really, before I trash this perfume, I want to say I really, really respect Jean-Paul Gaultier for that. And I'm thankful that I got to try this. That being said, <laughs> this does not smell good to me, like whatsoever. Um, it's interesting. This is kind of in the same genre in my mind as Alien Goddess Intense. I'm going to spray this real quick, just so I can just refresh my memory. Oh yeah, it's for sure also the opening that really, really bothers me. So what what's good about this? Um, it is, let's talk about the notes because I'll, I'll, I can really quickly elucidate what I don't like and what I do. In the top, there is this Calon note, or, or it's maybe it's not Calon, but it's cal Calozone or something. It is some sort of um, synthetic note that is meant to smell like a watery note with watermelon, like a watery sort of citrusy watermelony note. So on paper, that sounds like something I'd be interested in because I love like a watery salty note. Okay. Um, one thing I don't like immediately bothers me is th that note. And then there's red berries in the top. I hate a synthetic red berry note. A synthetic red berry note is always extremely bothersome to me. I don't know why I can always detect it and I don't know why it's so bothersome to me, but I don't like it. And then it has in the base, it has some other florals, but it is a primarily lily sort of um, floral. That is something I also really respect, even though I don't like this perfume because lily is not a floral that's used a lot in today's perfume. It was a floral that was used a lot in vintage perfumes. Like you'll see lily in like aquatics, still but yeah I, I really respect the the trying to use the lily that I will definitely say that um execution because of the other notes I don't really like it also has a meringue note which they say this is a gourmand inspired fragrance I remember reading somewhere in the marketing that it's supposed to be like on the card it said something gourmand like gourmand inspired or something like that there is something sweet in here, but again, it's not overly gourmand to me. It's still a floral. It's, it's like a sweet floral to me. A sweet floral with, uh, there is an aquatic note to it and almost like a saltiness. And there is a sort of solarity to it as well. But something about all of it together doesn't land. It doesn't land. I don't like it or find it like repurchase worthy or full bottle worthy. I would say like, yeah, I don't know. It kind of gives me the vibe of like Paco Rabanne's Olympia, but again, just doesn't, doesn't land. Um, I think it's like, a, yeah, I don't know. It's in the same genre as Olympia. It's in the same genre as Goddess Intense, but it just doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't land. All of those notes together just really feel bothersome to my spirit. I don't know. I don't. I do not like it. Okay. We have two perfumes left. Dad, I'm filming. Please chill. Love you. No, please chill. Okay. I had to tell my dad to chill. Love you, pops. We have um, Kaeli Yum Pistachio Gelato 33. And this is a full bottle. This is another one that I smelled back in June when I was with uh, Will and I immediately liked it and was also immediately shocked because when I first smelled it in the store, it was nothing like I had imagined. The name is Yum Pistachio Gelato. 
the notes for this um, do not, I think they're really interesting and I love looking at them, um, but they do not do justice to the complexity of this fragrance, I feel. Because you think, oh, oh, this stuff is so pretty. First of all, I love this bottle. I adore this color a bottle. I adore the sort of frosted glass. Um, I just think it's so stunning, so pretty. And I think it completely suits the juice for this. And I love Kaoli as a brand. Like I, and Huda Beauty, I love their morals, their ethics. I also recently bought uh, this matte little palette from Huda. Sorry, this is totally unrelated tangent. <laughs> Stunning. And then I also bought their setting powder for when I like want like a very, I don't know, when I want to set my makeup. And both of those are good. Um, but yeah, this, this perfume. So I like Huda Catan is what I'm saying. The founder. Um, I don't like all of the Kaoli scents. Um, and I've smelled quite a few. My friend Mimi got a sampler a while back, so I smelled a lot of them. The one that stood out to me out of all of them, I liked the white floral, the deja vu one, but the one that stood out to me the most was the amber and by only, but I didn't, I still didn't feel like I needed a bottle of that. This is just stunning. I'm going to try to describe to you. So yes, you are going to get a pistachio gelato. Yes, you are going to get like it's pistachio gelato in the sense that like when you walk into the ice cream shop, it's not like directly eating pistachio gelato. It's kind of the smell of, you know, when you first walk into an ice cream shop, you smell that sort of creamy general ice cream smell. It's that. And there is pistachio in this and there is a nuttiness to this, but this is not purely gourmand to me. Yes, it's a gourmand fragrance, but no one to me has really honed in on the fact that there is a fruitiness to this there's a greenness to this a freshness to this I believe there is bergamot in the notes and I maybe there's green notes in here but there's a really green fresh fruity bergamot -y sort of opening to this and I believe there's peach and maybe raspberry is in the notes there are fruity notes listed in here but again I think with the name pistachio gelato that just gets lost that the beginning is like there's a fruity freshness to this. It's really, really fresh. As much as it's a gourmand it and it is super sweet, there's still a freshness to this. And in, in addition to that freshness, fruitiness, the greenness, there is a floral, uh, sort of a musky floral quality to this. Yeah, it's a gourmand, but there's also florals. This is just such a well-rounded scent. And on top of all of those other things I've listed, it performs well, and there is a sort of general marshmallow quality to this. This really like stands out to me as like a marshmallowy fragrance. Yep, yum pistachio gelato, but I get a whole lot of fluffy marshmallow to this. This this fragrance is fluffy. It's fresh. It's sweet, and yet it's super interesting. I don't know. I I don't think everyone will like this at all. So it's not a safe blind buy whatsoever, but. If you can get your nose on this, man, is this worth it, in my opinion. I really, really love this scent. And I think the box is cute, too, of course. Um, I'll probably still throw it out because I just don't keep boxes like that. But I just think the scent is stunning. And last but not least is kind of a half repurchase because I had tried, I told you guys, I had tried the EDT of this. And I used up a 1.7 ounce of the EDT. And I was on the fence about repurchasing um, but now I've decided I actually really do want to repurchase it because it is a beautiful summertime scent. I think smelling the EDP reminded me of how much I liked the EDT. And, um, yeah, it's been enough now that I've, it's been like enough time since I finished the EDT of Aura that now I'm like missing it, you know? So I had picked up the EDP cause I've never smelled the EDP. And I was like, well, this was an amazing deal. This was about one, uh, this was about $36 for one fluid ounce so it is a tiny bottle but it also came with a little lotion and a body wash so i was like ah oh, that's so cute it, i think the price is reasonable for a, a one ounce more than reasonable especially for a scent like aura which i tried the edt so i thought i might like this like they are different guys but like i knew i liked the aura vibe so this comes out and it is just the cutest little setup here and this is the 
shower milk i have not used this yet i have used the lotion though to layer with this um i think the lotion is cute the lotion smells like the perfume there is a little bit of like a general lotiony scent too so it's kind of like the perfume with like a general do you guys know what i'm talking about when you you know how the the lotions that come with perfumes smell like the perfume butt lotion do you know what i'm saying i know that sounds like straightforward or dumb but do you guys kind of get, get what i'm trying to say yeah um i really like this stuff i like the edt and i think i will definitely keep this for a while like i'm not trying not using this up so soon I don't, I think I would repurchase this, the EDT as well. I know for sure I will be repurchasing the EDT for like summer. I just find it really pretty. But I also think this is so pretty. Talk about an interesting vanilla scent, a grounded vanilla scent, a really complex vanilla scent. There's been a lot of discussion in this video about me being triggered that the people that, that saying that there's interesting vanillas on the market or suggesting interesting vanillas, you get them and they aren't interesting. And they aren't vanilla. This is everything to me. This is green, but synthetic, but vanilla, but like musky and animalic still. There's uh, the notes in this is like what? Rhubarb, I think pear in the EDP. I think in the EDT, it's more like strawberry watermelon, but I, in the EDP, it's like pear, rhubarb. Um, and the rhubarb to me is what gives it this green quality. But the marketing for this fragrance, A, first of all, are you kidding? This bottle is stunning and cute. Um, but the marketing for like the imaging campaigns was like a, a really sexy woman in the jungle. And it is totally that. This this scent is very humid. Uh, humid. Like I haven't worn it in humid weather, humid weather. I've worn it in hot weather. But it is like, it's wet. It's humid. Um, it's jungle. Um, and it's also jungle in the animalic way. Like I said, there is this sort of underlying animalic musk that I don't think is often highlighted in this fragrance, which makes it really sexy, but it's also sweet. There's that vanilla in the base. So it is a sweet fragrance. I don't think everyone would like this. And when you first spray this, the EDP version, it is, there is a sort of general, like I said, it is a green scent. So there's a general sort of greenness and there is a general sort of like plasticky syntheticness to it. Um, I happen to like it and, it and in general the whole vibe of it feels almost mentholated like it feels like a mentholated medicated perfume i don't know like if that's making sense but it feels very medicated when you first spray it as it develops it becomes softer and it reminds me a lot more of the edt um but this is a lot less fruity than fruitier than the edt it's a lot more complex than the edt but it is a very very pretty sweet green vanilla that's mentholated, that's animalic and musky, that's green. It's all of those, guys. It's everything I'm describing to you is not untrue. It's just all existing at once. And I really like it. Not everyone will like this, but I happen to love it. So yeah, we're ending on a really happy and positive note, Ara Mugler. It's not shocking that I like a Mugler fragrance. Um, they are probably... Yeah, probably. It's it's either going to be Mugler or Dior. I mean, if I look at my collection, I own the most Mugler or Dior um thus far so but yeah this is uh, a little R. Mugler gift set and that concludes the haul 53 minutes yeah yeah I like to talk but also there was a lot of ground to cover here <laughs> and I'm very opinionated when it comes to perfumes so I hope this was interesting to you guys did you guys get any perfumes for Christmas like I said I didn't get any from anyone else so I was like I kind of just went off the deep end as you can see and was like well then I'm just gonna buy them myself um so I feel a little really happy that I'm able to do that these days um and blessed and also also what did you guys get did you guys get any this year if you didn't get any for Christmas or around this time or whatever holidays what interests you what's on your list did you try anything in this video that like you loved it and maybe I hated it was there anything that I hated that you loved was there anything that I love that you hate? I want to know. Let's talk in the comments, okay? Um, but I hope this was really interesting to you guys. And I am going to do, obviously I have some decluttering and sending back to do. But once I get everything sort of situated with my collection in the next couple of days or so, um, I will be doing an updated fragrance collection for you guys. So you guys can kind of see the current state of my scent library, okay? 
So we'll talk soon in another video, but love you guys. Bye.